nearly 50,000 finally get to Turner Field in Atlanta for game two of the three-game series. Happy Fourth of July. Everybody getting set for St. Louis and Atlanta here on Turner South. Welcome back to Turner Field, everybody. Bob Rathbun, Jeff Torborg, and a happy fourth to you, sir. Thank you. Was that, really that was a powerful ceremony, was it not? Wow. That'll get your juices flowing. And now we get set for baseball. And the Braves tonight, there's an old line, Jeff, about momentum in baseball being only as good as the next day's starting pitcher. Well, the Braves have won six out of their last ten. And their starting pitching has been pretty good lately. Well, the baseball adage of pitching setting the tone gives you a chance to win. The starting pitching has been outstanding. Chuck Chuck James really got us started with, and Horacio Ramirez and John Smoltz have really had outstanding outings. With Ramirez, of course, did an excellent job against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium, and then came back here and got the Orioles. And then, of course, Chuck James, the young kid, brought back to the big leagues, did a job at Tampa Bay. He came back and beat the Orioles here in Atlanta. And John Smoltz pitched a tremendous game against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Came away with no decision, but last night fell behind 3-0 and kept it there and really tuned things up and got the big win against the Cardinals. Boy, this starting pitching makes a difference with every part of your game. And the Braves getting it from these guys, Messrs. James, Ramirez, and Smoltz, and now they turn to John Thompson, who comes off the disabled list tonight. The blister problem took him out of that game at Florida a few weeks back. He was pitching one of his better games of the season that night where he allowed the Marlins just four hits and two runs. He will be back on the mound for Atlanta tonight getting the start against the St. Louis Cardinals. And the Cardinals will be sending their ace Chris Carpenter last year's National League Cy Young Award winner to the mound against Atlanta as they bring out their stars last year's MVP Albert Pujols the man who finished second in the MVP balloting the Braves Andrew Jones plus reigning all-stars Edgar Renteria and Brian McCain we're getting set for baseball first pitch coming up and the Braves take the field here in Atlanta middle game of this three game series in the St. Louis lineup tonight brought to you by your local Toyota dealer David Eckstein gets it started. Third in the league with 103 hits. He added two to that total here in last night's game. Then the big three and three, four, and five. Pujols, Roland, and Edmonds. And they're out there to face brave right-hander John Thompson. Scott Rowland, the St. Louis third baseman, provided us with this scouting report. So this has kind of been his... Uh... You know, he's bread and butter, and he, he's going to throw some sinkers. He's going to throw some cutters, try to keep you off balance, probably. Uh, you know, he's going to go out and pitch. You know, that's the main thing. He's going to work both sides of the plate and uh, try, to, try to keep the ball down and get some ground balls. And Jeff Torborg, what say you about John Thompson? Well, that was a good scouting report from Roland, but John Thompson we know is a sinker ball pitcher. He's got to keep the ball down, which he was really doing in Florida when he hurt that finger with a blister coming up, but he's more effective when he uses his curveball and his changeup as well, but He's got to pitch down in the zone. We spoke with John yesterday and asked him about the blisters, and he said, well, he threw fastballs and sinkers okay. That's probably the two pitches affected the most because the cutter and slider come off the four-seamer. But John Thompson pronounced himself yesterday fit and ready to go, and he's out there making start number 14 for Atlanta here this afternoon. Let's check out the Braves defensively. Andrew Jones and Jim Edmonds, the two starting center fielders, both outstanding. They've got a lock on the gold gloves in the outfield, eight consecutive for Andrew. So here we go with baseball, and David Eckstein, the St. Louis shortstop, to get things started. First pitch of this 4th of July is in there for strike one. Jim Reynolds has the plate tonight. Tim Welke, Kerwin Danley, and Chris Guccione, the umpires on the bases. Eckstein hitting 318. And as we saw in last night's game, Jeff, pretty pesky. He figures out a way to get on with his hits or getting hit with a pitch. Yeah, he's a little guy. He surprises you because occasionally he'll turn on a ball and hit out of the ballpark. Eight home runs last year. But the other part is he, he doesn't seem to ever miss a pitch. He's a great guy. He can do a lot of things with him. Tony La Russa, the great Cardinal manager, can use him in any way he wants. He can bunt for a base hit. He can hit and run with him because he puts the ball in play. 
Just off the plate, three and one. First in multi hit games. And number 35 came last night. Hit with the pitch 10 times. And puts the ball in play, as you mentioned, Jeff, inside. And there he is, sprinting to first to get this game started with the walk. Now, that's not a good way to start a game, especially when you have a guy who is going to put the ball in play. You try to make him put the ball in play with the pitch that you want. John Thompson, again, as you mentioned, Bob, has not been out on this mound for a while. And that really, especially after a blister, that's a field pitch type of feeling. Cause problems when you haven't been out there. Liner to right. First and second for St. Louis. Chris Duncan with the base hit. Uh, here comes trouble. Albert Pujol last night and a double and this long home run off John Smoltz. And here he comes again with runners on base. Eckstein at second and Duncan at first. They got him out last night. Chad Pirano got him out with a good sinker ball. Got him to hit into a double play. It almost got Marcus Giles killed at second base, but they turned it. You got to keep the ball down in this guy. Down and away. He is so strong up in the zone. Good pitch at the knees. Pujols tied for the National League lead in home runs, and he's teed off on Thompson to the tune of six for 12 in his career. Rolling on deck. Now there was another pitch down. Now when we say you have to pitch down, it doesn't mean he's not going to hit the ball down there. But we're saying if you keep the ball down, there's a chance he'll hit the ball. When he hits it hard, he might hit it at an infielder on the ground. It's when you get it elevated to this guy, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark anywhere. From the right field line to the left field line, he's that strong. The thing, or one of the things I guess you'd notice about Albert Pujols, there's no bad movement. He is locked and loaded at that plate. He's also got that spread stance that we're seeing more and more of. You remember Bagwell was one of the first to really spread out. Joe DiMaggio, way back, had a big widespread stance where they barely strode into the ball, hardly moved their front foot. Jim Edmonds on the same team does this. This is what Andrew Jones is trying to do. That spread stance, they don't commit very quickly. But the point you made is what they call it, the major league level or major league scouts will say he has a quiet bat. It just stays and it cocks and boy he can really rip it. Now Pujols tires of waiting. Al McCray looking on from the St. Louis dugout. If you had a batting stance young people to emulate. How about Pujols. Pretty good example. I mean fundamentally sound. Three and one and Thompson's in trouble. Nobody out two on he's already walked the leadoff hitter and behind the dangerous pool holes three and one the Cardinals it's hard to believe with pool holes batting third every night the Cardinals have gone eight straight games without scoring in the first inning. They keep that string going Thompson and the Braves have got some work to do. Bases loaded. And here comes Scott Rowland. Scott Rowland, the fifth leading hitter in the National League, has a 346 lifetime average against Thompson with two home runs. Bases loaded right away. Nobody out. Rowland 0 for 4 in last night's game. Well, there's a nice pitch. That's a good pitch to get him started with. You know, the fans are booing a little bit when Pujols walked, but you know, you've got to be so careful with him. The pitch didn't miss by a whole lot. They had a little bit of a game plan, but if they stay down there, they might be able to get out of this mess with maybe only a run score.
Brown ball to short. Should be two. Giles turns it. The run does score, but the Braves get the double play. 1-0 St. Louis. Now Duncan I, moves to third. I'm sorry, Bob. I made that comment only because when you're in a situation like that, very often the manager or the pitching coach will go out if he does go out, or he'll say, hey, listen, we'll act like we're going to give up a run here. Let's just try to get out of this with the least amount of damage. Now, obviously, there are times when you get a strikeout, a pop-up, and then a double play, and you get lucky. But more often than not, you go the percentages. You're happy if you can get away with just giving up one run in that situation. But not done yet. The dangerous Jim Edmonds at the plate. Opening strike. Edmonds hitting 260. Nine home runs and 40 runs batted in. Jim had two hits last night. In there, 0 and 2. Well, we are watching John Thompson be successful. First pitch strikes. That's five for five. That's a good sign. And he is keeping the ball down. He's missing a little bit away, but he's keeping the ball down, which is also a very good sign. First time back on the Turner Field mound in a month and a day. Thompson delivers 0 2. Just missed. First outing since June the 14th at Florida and his first home appearance since the second game of that day night doubleheader against Arizona back on June the 3rd. Well he's tried twice inside just missed in there and good call by home umpire Jim Reynolds one of the best young umpires in the game. They are off the plate. They're trying to keep the ball on his hands. Full count. Chris Duncan at third base. One run is in. But the Braves will take that as the Cardinals have the bases loaded, nobody out. Now Edmonds at three and two. Laced into right. Edmonds on his way to second. Frank Thor up with it. Cardinals lead two nothing. John Thompson got ahead 0 2. Edmonds worked the count full and doubles into right. They're trying to get the ball in again, and they got it. They got that ball might not even been a strike that might have been off the plate inside but Edmonds had seen so many in there that he was going to open up and just get his hands through when he got it. I don't th that might not have been a strike even. Tenth double for Edmonds his 41st run batted in. Now right field to Juan Encarnacion. One for four last night with a couple of K's. Braves roared back to win 6 three after trailing three nothing early. The St. Louis Ball Club leading the division by a game and a half. Cincinnati losing this afternoon in Milwaukee five to two. With the Redbird leading the Central is a game and a half at game time. Popped into shallow right. Frank Gore comes in, takes care of it. And that's it for St. Louis. John Thompson has a couple of words for the plate umpire Jim Reynolds as we go to the bottom of the first inning on a patriotic day in Atlanta. St. Louis bottom of the first inning. The Atlanta lineup brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Braves hitting four home runs last night. Giles, Renteria, McCann, and then late in the ball game, Langerhans. And they're facing Chris Carpenter, last year's National League Cy Young Award winner. Boy, he can be dominant when he's on. He's got an excellent cutter. And also a real good sinker off his fastball. Giles fouling it back. Carpenter making his 16th start. Spent some time on the disabled list in mid May. Six and four with a 2.85. That's the fifth best ERA. Great walk strikeout ratio. 
Giles drills one to left center field. That ball's pretty well hit, and that ball's going to be gone. Marcus Giles has done it again. Getting the Braves going as he did in the third inning last night. You remember what he told us after the game last night? His comment was, I've been getting tied up inside. I'm just trying to get my hands through. And he sure did. Talk about what the Cardinals did to get things going. David Eckstein walked and scored. Well, that's a good way to do it right there. Red Guerrilla and Garenteria with a swing and a miss. And he and Giles have really been getting the Braves going here of late. Giles and Renteria have been hot. Giles has now hit safely in seventh grade. Look out. Low bridging Renteria. One ball and one strike. Well, that was a curveball he didn't get over. He's got a big curveball, and at times a big curveball is difficult to control. And that's a breaking ball. If you're going to really knock somebody down, you don't want to do it with a curveball because if you happen to nick him, you want to make it be worth it. <laughs> you want it to be hard. 1-1 one, one pitch. Renteria is it safely in eight straight. Boy, they have at the front end of the order, boy. Of course, Renteria has been hot most of the year anyway. But now with Giles starting to heat up, boy, that makes a major difference. You just saw how the Braves scored, as we mentioned. Last night, they got it going the same way with Giles with the home run, as you mentioned, Bob. But also, the Cardinals got things going in this game the same way. The front end of the order, the table setters get on. Ball four to Renteria. Well, this is what's been happening in the last six games. Marcus, and we figured in that last home run a moment ago. Now three homers in his last six games and a 421 average. And Renteria at 296. So they're getting on to set the table. And that's giving guys like Benavid, Chipper, Andrew, McCann, etc., RBI opportunities just about every time they come up. Now, Benavid's in there again tonight for Chipper. Chipper available to pinch hit, but they want to keep him off that sore foot. Benavid taking strike one. Well, you don't figure to get many off a guy like Chris Carpenter. And what a boost after St. Louis gave him two runs in the top of the inning to come right back. Two strikes. Boy, a good point, Bob, when you're... When you have a, an ace on the mound and they, you set him up with a couple runs and give him a little cushion to have your leadoff hitter come right back and put one in the seats and get the fans right back in. It, it really means a lot. It, it, you know, the last two nights, there's been electricity around this ballpark. Inside. It's one of the great rivalries that the St. Louis Cardinals meant so much to the South for so many years before Major League Baseball was here. The Atlanta Crackers, at one time a St. Louis AAA club. Tony La Russa once played for the Richmond Braves. These clubs have a great playoff history together. You think back to 96 when the Braves were down three games to one and the NLCS came roaring back to wipe out the Cardinals. And St. Louis returned the favor in 2000. Now, this is a great series. And it's one that the Atlanta fans circle on the schedule when it comes out. Two and two to Benjamin. Three and two now. Full count. And really, it's sad in a way, Jeff, that the Cardinals make only one Atlanta appearance all season long. Yes. Yeah, it is. They're, they're a big attraction around baseball. You're right. Great tradition. Both these organizations have great tradition. It's great to look at their uniforms. Those are the traditional old original uniforms they've worn for years. But also talking about the table setters, that doesn't allow you to pitch around the middle of the order. If you remember last night, the Cardinals were going to take any chances with Andrew at all. They were hoping he'd just come out of his game and try to swing at anything they threw him. They set up in the left-hander's batter's box to get him out. But you put base runners on, you've got to pitch to those guys. Runner moving on 3-2 and a foul ball down the left field line. 
Now, just watching that ball hit, Bedman is a good hitter, switch hitter. It's, you know, it's really a, a pleasure for a manager to have a switch hitter on this team because you know you don't have to worry about matchups. You just let him turn around. However, it's tough for a switch hitter to keep both sides sharp because it's not the same. Doesn't even look the same standing up there. But they've been pitching. The Cardinals last night pitched Bedman low and in the entire game, and it looked like he was chasing everything. The minute they pitch him out over, Wacko, he gets his hands out and he just missed hitting that ball fair down the left field line. You see the splits on Benneman. Runner again moving strikeout. Can Renneria get back? No. It's a double play. And there's two gone. A strikeout at the plate. And then Molina. <laughs> he is something else. Renteria looking back. He got halfway at nine. I don't think so. And then the Cardinals with next time get him two six three. Well, there's a reason that he wasn't any farther along in that. In that situation, when you're running, you got to make sure you don't get picked off. So that's almost like a hit and run. You're, you're not breaking early. You're hoping that the batter just puts the ball in play. And sure enough, they threw Wilson Bediment low and in, and he missed it. Andrew up two outs, bases empty. Take strike one. 66 runs batted in, 18 home runs. Andrew just one for 13, however, in this homestand. One ball, one strike. And for the 4th of July, the message board here, the big jumbo trying to center field, it looks like John Paul Jones instead of Andrew Jones out there. <laughs> John Paul from Curacao. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about Andrew, especially when Chipper's not in the lineup, how he tries to change his game. Right at the shortstop, X time playing in the hole. Throws out Andrew Jones. And that's all for the Braves. But Atlanta up off the deck thanks to Marcus Giles. He drills his seventh home run of the season off last year's Cy Young Award winner, Chris Carpenter. One and already early fireworks in Atlanta. Yadier Molina to lead things off in the second. The Cardinal catcher hitting 218 with three home runs, 31 RBIs. Pretty wild first inning, Mr. T. Well, I guess. Miles on deck and then Carpenter. Hit well to left center over Andrew's head. And up against the fence, here's Molina. On the slow jog in the second with his 13th two base hit. And more problems for John Thompson. Well, here's the pitch from John to Molina. He's a high fastball hitter and he gets one up there. It's the, almost the same pitch that he almost hit out to right field last night on Smoltz. John got one up there, but it. He kept it. He got a little more juice on it, and he kept it on the right side of the field. But this ball was driven by Molina over Andrew's head. You know, he, somebody popped it to get it over Andrew's head. Swing and a foul. This is Aaron Miles, the Cardinals' second baseman. You talked earlier about switch hitters. Well, here's one. Miles hitting 260 overall, no homers and 16 RBIs. And since coming over from the Colorado Rockies, Aaron Miles has done a, an outstanding job giving Tony La Russa that switch hitter at the bottom of the order. Yeah, really, the switch hitter in a lineup can really foul up the other manager because you're always looking for matchups, and it's difficult to do when you've got switch hitters in the lineup because that hitter just turns right around and hits from the other side of the plate. Miles pulls one in and out of the Brave dugout. Last night we saw Miles drill that double that knocked in two runs off John early in the ball game. And then he turned things around, if you remember. He struck him out on three consecutive breaking balls in the sixth inning. When he struck the side out, he went to his breaking ball. And usually switch hitters like the fastball more. They don't like a breaking ball. That's why they're switch hitting. Ball at two strikes.
Thompson in his career against St. Louis, two and four in nine starts as a Brave, three starts, two here, an 0 and 1 record. Up the middle, Giles can get it. Coming around third is Molina. And a 3 to 1 St. Louis lead. RBI single, Aaron Miles. Now I think this pitch that Miles hit here is a hanging breaking ball. Brian McCann's trying to, yeah, I think it was something off speed up. I don't think that, that wasn't a sinker. And Miles was able to shoot it through the middle. That's another thing. As you see, Carpenter getting ready and showing bunt. When you see a little guy, oftentimes as a catcher, you'll sit there and you'll look up at the hitter to see where he's looking and see his approach, see where his foot goes. But you, in your mind, you know he's a little guy. You figure, well, you're going to try to shoot the ball around. What's the easiest pitch to do that? The one closest to his eyes where he can see the ball, the ball up. And there was that hanger, and he just slapped it through the middle. Carpenter two for 27 at the plate this season. One run batted in. Drops the bunt down nicely. Thompson bare hand pick to Giles covering a 1-4 sacrifice. That pushes Miles down to second. Get an inside look at the beautiful suburban Atlanta home of Marcus and Tracy Giles in the July issue of Chop Talk. Call 1-877-655-CHOP now to subscribe to Chop Talk, the official monthly magazine of the Braves. 1-877-655-2467. Top of the order next time. Man at second. One out, a run in. St. Louis with four hits today. Off speed pitch in there for a strike. A walk and scored the first run of the night. <laughs> the young looking Patriot. <laughs> One if by land, two if by sit. Now, which way was it? Now, let's see. That's right. Eckstein looks, I swear, you know, I, I would venture to say he comes to some ballparks and the security guards make him show his ID. He looks like he might be the bad boy. He went to the University of Florida, was an outstanding player there. And there were a lot of people said, well, he's too small and his, his uh, talents are not the kind you'd see at the major league level. And the Red Sox signed him. And he went west and got a chance to play. He did an excellent job for the Angels. And he's picked right up where he left off since he's been with the Cardinals the last two years. Swing and a foul back, a key component of that World Series team at Anaheim in 2002. All right, which one's younger? <laughs> That's true. Look it. <laughs> One and two to Eckstein with Miles at second. Well, what you love about Eckstein in that leadoff spot is his ability to work the count. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't mind hitting with two strikes. A lot of people try to make sure that they swing early, that they don't get in a strikeout situation. He's got that little short swing, choking up on the bat. And a liner to first. Scampering back to second is Miles. Two outs. Now that's a classic example. How did he ever get the bat on this ball? And then he almost hits a ball inside the first baseline. Got something on it. And you don't see guys choking up much anymore. Choked up. Look at this. Look at he almost jumped off the ground to get on top of that ball. Look at that swing. That's the way you play wiffle ball in the backyard. <laughs> Two man gone for left fielder Chris Duncan. Giles gobbles it up. Cardinals get a run. Two hits and leave a man. Middle of the second, St. Louis three and Atlanta one. 
Cardinals, bottom of the second. Brian McCann to lead things off for the Braves. Big two-run home run last night that gave the Braves the lead that they would not relinquish. Opening strike for McCann. Six homers now, 25 RBIs and a 357 average. 0-2. He's been hot lately. Eight hits in his last 20 at-bats. It's been so impressive to me, Bob, and we joked about it, but how hot he's been since he's come back from his injury. Center and Edmonds. Braves facing a great pitcher tonight at Chris Carpenter. We spoke with Jeff Rancourt earlier tonight to get his thoughts on the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner. He's going to throw fastballs, obviously, uh, mix it in and out, and then he's going to come back with his pitch, which is to, to right-handers is his curveball, and he throws it a lot, and he's going to throw it at any point in the count. So you just, you really, you got to look to me for one or other, sit on something, and, and try to hope that it's a, uh, a pitch you can handle and drive it. Starts him with a breaking ball. Missed with it inside. And Frank Corey hit a home run off Carpenter last year in St. Louis. Slowly hit, rolling, can't make the play. Infield hit Jeff Francoeur. Well, you know one thing, Scott Rowland can't come up with it. It's got to be a base hit. <laughs> Boy, he's a fine player. And one of the reasons he had to come busting in, he knows Jeff Francoeur can get down the line. Jeff's a big guy, but he can run. And you don't realize that Francoeur is six foot four, not 220 pounds. He can really go. But you see, that's one of those do-or-die things for Scott Rowland. He's got to come up barehanded to make the throw immediately, or he's not going to have a chance. Kind of looked and looked at his head there. He looked away a little bit, looked toward the base when he went to reach for it. Second brave hit. And Adam LaRoche takes ball one. Fourth of July, a special day in the LaRoche household. Their daughter, Montana, celebrating her birthday today. Let's see if Daddy can hit one out for it. Missed last night's game due to back spasms. Overall, Adam hitting 250 with 13 home runs. Braves have really been hitting the long ball. Giles tonight gives the Braves five in this series and eight home runs in their last three games. Adam is starting to heat it up a little bit. We were talking yesterday before the game about his timing. He's a real timing hitter. He's not a big muscle hitter. Everything is timing. He stands almost upright. He starts with his toe off the ground or his toe on the ground and his back heel up. And then he just kind of gets in position to hit. But he's the most relaxed looking hitter. It, it doesn't look like he's ready to start with. But it gets him going. Look at the stance. It looks like he's just uh, waiting for the bus. Yeah, kind of. No swing out of field three and one. What you're talking about, Jeff? Mm -hmm. 417 over the last three games. Liner. Base knock into left for LaRoche and Francora will hold at second. First and second, two go uh, one away here in the second inning. And Ryan Langerhands, another brave, really heating up. Yeah, the swing we were talking about, how relaxed he is, and then he gets everything going. When his timing is on, you can see him cock the bat a little bit, didn't try to do too much. See the bat kind of wiggle toward the pitcher, and then he flipped that ball to left field. When he has his swing going, boy, he's got a pretty looking swing. Ryan hit number six last night. He's homered in back to back games. Yeah, Ryan hit a stretch about a month and a half ago where he wasn't complaining, but he had something wrong with his hand. It was bothering him. And boy, when your hands are feeling weak or hurting, you don't swing the bat the same. Slowly hit. Good job by LaRoche hitting the brakes. Now a play at the plate. How about that? 3-2 St. Louis. You know, at first when this play was developing, it looked like Adam Roach made a mistake that he waited a little bit too far back toward first base. 
when Miles went to tagging. But as it turned out, the great base running and coaching by Freddy Gonzalez at third base, Fran Coor coming. Now here's the play. See, Adam had to stop not to be tagged, but it looked like they were going to double him up. But the good base running, instinctive base running by Jeff Francoeur made that work. So Langer hands out 4-3, LaRoche at second. And Francoeur in the dugout with a run scored 3-2, St. Louis. 4-3, no RBI, and a fielder's choice to get Francoeur home. Thompson the hitter. And we mean that in a most literal sentence. Thompson's hitting 276. Now look at Frank Coor. Stops, sees the play, boom. And then a great slide. Now you hate to see somebody slide in head first at home plate. The catcher can plant his foot and really hurt you, but that was a great slide to the inside. I get the sense, Jeff, that Frank Coor noticed that Molina's up the line. And to make that play, he said, I, this is one of those occasions I can go in hands first. Yeah, I think you're right. And he stayed way inside, just reached back. But Adam Roach made that work. Made the first half work. Let's put it that way. Because he's going to be a dead duck at second base if Frank Coor doesn't realize, I better get going here. Mm -hmm. That was a very interesting play. Three and one on Thompson. Some of the umpires behind home plate thought that may have been ball four. <laughs> Payoff pitch with two outs. Hit to third. Roland gathers and takes care of Thompson, but the Braves get a run back. Now it's a heads up base running by Jeff Francoeur and Adam LaRoche. And to two, three, two, St. Louis. To the third inning. And here comes Albert Pujols to lead things off. Walked in the first inning. Had two hits last night, including his 28th home run. Lance Bergman hit two for Houston last night. Tied him with the top spot in the National League. And Bergman has gone ahead of him in RBIs. Lance now has 76 after today's Houston win over the Cubs. Who holds sitting on 73. And this one skips past McCann. One ball and one strike. One of the most incredible hitters in the game in terms of his consistency from day one. He's already won a National League batting title. He's never finished lower than seventh. He's led the National League in runs scored three times. He's led the league in hits, and he's never finished lower than fifth in hits. I mean, it's just amazing what this guy has accomplished. And no end in sight. Well, it had to scare the Cardinals a little bit earlier. What was that, about four weeks ago when he yes. complained of a oblique muscle strain. Now, you're, when it first happened, you wonder, uh-oh, did he blow a back out, you know, a, a disc or something? But he got back in a hurry. Sends one high and deep to left field. Langer hands going back. Will he have room at the fence? Okay, you can breathe now. <laughs> Boy, if I hit a ball this well and it didn't go out, I'd stand there and cry. This he he just got under that just a little bit. Ryan looked like he measuring where the wall was. Open and it didn't carry. Scott Rowland hit into a double play in the first inning. Takes ball one. Great bounce back season for Rowland after the injuries of 2005. Roller foul up along first. The count's even. As you look back, Jeff, and it's been a wild one here. Each team has scored in its each half inning of this game today. But we may look back on that at bat back of the first inning as one that turned the game. You know, either in in Atlanta's favor if they can come back and win this thing. Bases loaded, nobody out. Rolling up, hits into that 6-4-3 double play. Yes, yes. Yeah, because the game can be broken wide open 
any time in the game but in the first inning if base is loaded situation like that you get a big base hit continue to keep the rally going hmm. two and two and what it does also it can ruin you not just for that game because if you get a starter knocked out early invariably if a starter goes very early in the game it can ruin a bullpen for three four five sometimes a week. In the dirt three and two rolling a fabulous athlete. Mr. Baseball of course coming up but also a great basketball player in high school and was offered a scholarship to the University of Georgia. Mm. Hit foul. Do you remember the story. There was a pitcher in the National League. That he got hit by a couple times and he was not particularly enamored of that. He went to the visiting dugout the other I mean the clubhouse and called the guy out of the clubhouse. I'm going to talk to you about this. In the air to right field. Out number two. You remember the pitcher. No I do not. Dale no more. He went over okay. and knocked on the door and said come on out we're talking about this. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. And what did Mr. Nomo do? Uh, I, I, I think he refused to come out of the clubhouse at first. Shot to the right field corner by Edmonds. He may have his second double challenging the arm of Fran Thor. The throw is offline. And Jim with a two out two base hit. Well you told me the players used to do that all the time at Drysdale. Hey come here Don I want to talk to you about that last inside. Pitch. They didn't even want to look at Drysdale. I had hitters say what's he looking at. I said I think he's looking at you. What was the story about somebody was digging in. Well, that was Willie Mays. <laughs> he dug a hole. Willie used to dig a hole at the plate and dig in with both feet. And he must have forgotten that Drysdale was pitching that night. He dug in. Both feet dug a big hole looked out and realized it was Drysdale called timeout stepped back filled in the hole <laughs> still went down. <laughs> Encarnacion. Please tell Mr. Drysdale I'm sorry. Yes. Had that happened with the Cardinals. Remember Julian Javier. Yes. He had a tendency to kind of try to peek back to where the catcher was. And I suggested to him that Mr. Drysdale was not happy with him doing that. He said, well, please tell Mr. Drysdale I'm not looking back there. Encarnacion popped up to right in the first inning. John Thompson off the disabled list today. Lance Cormier was optioned to Richmond to make room for him. And the Cardinals have had grand total of five hits said maybe a deep shot to center here. Andrew can't do anything about this one. And Carnacion to straightaway center to make it a five to two game. He didn't get cheated on that one. His 11th home run. Remember Bob I was telling you last night when he got traded from Cincinnati over to the Marlins I was managing the Marlins at the time and I watched this guy take batting practice and hit some balls and during the game he has big time power as you can see by this one this is as you mentioned Bob straight away center. One and nothing to Molina. Two run home run and all this coming after two outs and nobody on base. Two and nothing. Encarnacion. You may recall Braves fans last year opening day. Here's a one hopper out the second four on that one. We come back. Two run home run by Juan Encarnacion and the Cardinals now have a five to two lead in Atlanta.
Marcus Giles fan club is here and their man leads off the bottom half of the third inning. A home run to left center field in the first his seventh of the campaign and his second in as many nights. Opening strike from Chris Carpenter. <laughs> I think his hat's too big. <laughs> those are great shots. I like those. Chase one. One and two. Little bouncer to first, wide of the bag, two holes. Takes it himself. Last night we spoke with Marcus after the ball game. He told us what he was trying to do at the plate. Well, I just looking for something uh, out over the plate, really. Uh, you know, he's been tying me up. I've been getting tied up pretty good on inside heaters, so I've been trying to get the ball off my hands a little bit. And he got all of this one. Those hands quickly through the zone. But the good part about that is a lot of times guys will hit home runs and then they'll come out of their stance and will not stay on the other side of the field when they get deep in the count. Well, sure enough, he, he knew that they were going to throw him breaking balls. And so even when he got after the first one was a strikeout there, he then went to the other side of the field. There are a lot of guys in this game, when they hit a home run, you go, oh, no, I don't want to see that because then they'll start pulling off balls, you know, trying to drive the ball. But... He's a smart enough hitter not to do that. Little looper down the right field line. And Edgar Renferi is thinking about two. And Carnacion over to get it. And Edgar with the double, his 17th of the year. And back come the Braves. Well, Edgar has a real knack of staying inside the ball when he wants to go the other side of the field he can do it at will that closed stance that ball was really on the inner half of the plate almost on his hands and he was able to stay inside the ball and slice it down the right field line now Wilson Betterman's having trouble with the Cardinal staff they're staying hard on his hands and throwing a breaking ball down under his bat and he can't lay off it. Betterman struck out his first time. He's fanned three times in two nights. Yes. They're feeding him a steady diet of breaking balls. They did the last at bat. He had just missed hitting a double down, a at least a double down the left field line when they pitched him out over. Came back in and struck him out low and in. He's got to stay off the pitch. They keep trying. You see where they were? They were back in there again. And, of course, if you're selected and you stay off it, now they're going to have to do something else. One ball, two strikes. I just saw a shot a minute ago of Dave Duncan, the fine pitching coach of the Cardinals, who for many years has teamed up with Tony La Russa, one of the best combination manager pitching coaches that this game has seen. Dave had a chance to manage a different couple different places, and he decided that he'd like to stay. He enjoys the working with the pitching staff so much. Two and two. And he's got his ace out there tonight, Chris Carpenter. Last year, the National League All-Star starter. An All-Star again here in 2006, but may not pitch next Tuesday in Pittsburgh because he is scheduled to take his regular turn in the rotation Sunday in Houston. You know, it's also an interesting story about Chris Carpenter. He had been with Toronto, and he was injured on the disabled list most of 2002. The Toronto Blue Jays released him. Mm -hmm. The Cardinals took a flyer knowing he wasn't going to be ready to pitch right away. Took a chance on him and they ended up with a Cy Young award winner. I give Dave Duncan a lot of credit and also Walt Jockety. The general manager has done a wonderful job in St. Louis. In on his fists. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it cost the Cardinals 300000 to, to invest in Chris Carpenter. Mm -hmm. And what a great payday they got Boy, just two years later. 
Well, they brought a lot of people over to St. Louis, and Dave has done a heck of a job with them. Guys that had not been successful other places. And again, cards coming inside and getting Benjamin to third Renteria with two outs. Andrew Jones is next. Crowded to short. That back of the first inning. Renteria at third. Braves trailing here by a score of five to two. Each team has scored at least a run in every at bat through the first three innings. Braves trying to keep that streak alive here. <laughs> They're still using the same technique. Yadier Molina, the catcher, when he sets up, they want the ball outside. If there were a left handed batter there, you wouldn't even see him. He'd be behind him. <laughs> now they want to come in, and Andrew hits it up the middle, but the shift was on. Miles. Practically up the middle and shaded close to second. Fields the ground ball. And that will take care of Andrew and the Atlanta Braves. Fourth of July in Atlanta. And throughout the Southeast. Happy Independence Day. 5-2 Cardinals. Some dark clouds in the distance. We understand around Peachtree City. Big shower right now. Hopefully it's not moving our way. Fourth of July and rain. Braves baseball. Hmm. <laughs> you were with us on the pregame. We went back and showed you that 1985 game. Here's Aaron Miles leading off for the Cardinals in the fourth inning. An RBI single to center his first time. Switch hitting second baseman. Came in trade from Colorado last December. Low. One ball, one strike. Miles, as a Rocky, became the first Colorado player ever to homer from both sides of the plate in the same game. Did that two years ago against Arizona. Dumont hasn't hit a home run this season. Carpenter on deck and the next time. In the air left center field, this is going to be in. And couldn't cut it off. Andrew on the track. And Aaron Miles has his second hit tonight, his third of the series. A double to left center. And this outing for John Thompson continues to chug along. Seven hits now for St. Louis. This is identical to the pitch last night that Miles drove into left center field, the identical place that drove in two runs. Off of John Smalls, identical place in the strike zone, up and out over. When you think about it, these Cardinal middle infielders are not big guys. Eckstein is 5'7", 165. Miles is 5'8", 170. They get the most out of their ability. They don't try to do too much. They know what they have to do. Slap the ball around, put it in play. Carpenter drops down the bunt. Thompson will go to first. One four sacrifice. Get smiles to third base. Top of the order next time. Activity in the Atlanta bullpen. As pitching coach Roger McDowell heads to the mound. This is Tyler Yates. I think this is probably what this meeting is all about is to give Tyler a chance to warm up out here in the bullpen because what do you say in this situation you got the top of the order up you go out and say don't walk him you know I had some brilliant statements when I went out to the mound sometimes don't walk him don't let him get a hit and then I'd leave and they said they yelled later on they said why didn't you explain how you wanted that done I didn't have an answer so I just left that with him. John Thompson started the year off brilliantly. His first seven starts, his ERA was under two, 1.87. But after that, John ran into some rough times. In his next six starts, one only one. And we mentioned he came out of that last start, which was going along pretty well in Florida, with that blister problem that put him on the DL. 
Last, last six starts, one win, three losses, and an 8.80 ERA. Hasn't won a game in this ballpark all season. Infield in. That was interesting. Bobby Cox knowing that Tony La Russa likes to squeeze any time in the game. You'll put down the suicide squeeze. Well, after they pitched out, then the Braves put it, I mean, the uh, Cardinals put another set of signs on very quickly. And there comes the squeeze, yep. and it's fouled off. It didn't come the immediate pitch after. It was two pitches after the the pitch out. You know, both sides of the field, you're really trying to think, what's the other guy going to try to do? You know the tendencies. Here's the attempted squeeze. What the rule of thumb is on the squeeze for the hitter is you got to you got to make sure you make contact with it. Now, obviously, you'd like to see him get it down fair, but you don't want it to get by him. One, two. Went down and got that one to foul it back. You know, it's interesting, I think, uh, that Tony might squeeze with a guy like Eckstein. You, you got a guy that makes contact. You got the infield in. Yep. His ability to just slap one past the infielder would get him a run. Well, he likes to squeeze, mm -hmm. and it also juices your team up. You know, the squeeze play, for some reason, gets everybody's blood yeah. going. Which one will reach the seats. You're right. That with the guy who has the ability to put the ball in play, you would think, well, you know, he's not going to miss the ball. He's going to put it in play, take your chance with it. But, you know, it's like a great base running play or and the squeeze or a great defensive play. It seems to get everybody fired up. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Strikes him out. What well, a big K for Thompson. A busted squeeze. And now the sacrifice fly no longer a possibility. You know, I'm not sure, but I think this might have been a breaking ball that didn't break. And next time was waiting for it to break and waiting for it and waiting for it and it didn't and he swung at it. Two men gone, Chris Duncan the hitter. Infield relaxes with two outs. Duncan single to right and scored the first to bounce out in the second inning. Pitching coach Dave Duncan's son up at the big club for the third time this season. Tony La Russa said after the before the game yesterday that hey I'm going to play him. He's up here. Show us what he can do. He's played 18 games at the major league level this season. He's a good looking hitter and as he gets stronger and more used to uh, major league level he's going to be a big power hitter. His father had good power. Dave Duncan signed originally with Charlie Finley in the old Kansas City A's and they went on to Oakland and Dave had some big home run years. Pulled foul. Two and two. Chris came up last year for St. Louis and got into nine games. And we talked about that home run, his first of the big leagues. He's hit three this year. And that home run in the regular season finale at Bush. His home run proved to be the game winning RBI. Man. Three and two. What happened here? Well, it missed. You know what made it look so good was that Brian McCann caught it so beautifully. That was just off the outside part of the plate, but beautifully caught. Ball four. And I don't believe Mr. Top is too long for this game, but Pujols coming up. Nope, here comes Bobby. That will be the third walk allowed by Thompson. And Tyler Yates will be summoned. So John Thompson's night is done after three and two thirds innings. And Bobby's got to go to the pen fairly early. Braves manager Bobby Cox making the singular wireless call to the bullpen.
John Thompson lasts just three and two-thirds innings tonight in his first start off the DL. Giving up seven hits and to date five runs responsible for the two men on base. And the new pitcher for Atlanta is Tyler Yates. 5-2 Cardinals. And he's got to face Albert Pujols right out of the chute. 16th appearance of 405 ERA. Nine walks, 11 strikeouts. On occasion this year, we've seen Tyler Yates throw the ball very well. The only problem he's had at times is with his command. Command of his slider. When his slider's on, he's very effective to right-handed hitters. Opening strike to Pujols, who has walked and hit one to the warning track and left. One ball, one strike. You must pitch Pujols carefully, of course, but there's plenty of thunder behind him. You do have a base open. Roland is on deck, and then Edmonds. The base that's open is second right now. Pitch. Strike. One and two. The point you just made about pitching him carefully. Sometimes somebody will say, well, how do you want him pitch? Carefully. Make sure you make your good pitches. No fair look at your chops, Pujols. One, two. Now, if you think the Braves are having difficulty, how about the Yankees tonight? Cleveland, 16. Yankees won at the end of five in Cleveland. The Indians have hit five home runs. Three off Sean Chacon, who lasted just an inning and a third and gave up seven runs. And T.J. Beam gives up six runs in two-thirds of an inning and two home runs. I wonder what the back page will say about that one tomorrow in New York. The one-two. Now McCann and Yates will chat. I like this. I like this. Your young catcher takes command. He goes out. They're going to make sure they know what they want to do here. There's not going to be any indecision. You know, like one puts down one side, the other one to the other, and they cut the difference. Going to make sure what you want done here. You know, the catcher initiates it, obviously, with what he'd like to see him throw, but the pitcher has the last word. He's the guy holding that ball. He knows what feels best to him. Two and two to Albert Pujols. Swing and a fly ball, right field. Francoeur drifting back. Side retired. Good job, Tyler Yates coming on to take care of Pujols. On this Independence Day, we hear from our troops over the bottom of the fourth inning. 5-2 St. Louis. And here's Brian McCann leading off. McCann, a fly ball to center in the second. Coming off a two for four last night, uh, night last night. Two run home run. And this one hits him. I was just about to say, we haven't seen the vintage Chris Carpenter. He's complaining that that ball did not hit him. Tony La Russa coming up to the top step, but McCann standing on first base. Let's go to the videotape. Yeah. Yeah, it did hit him. He doesn't need to be hit on his legs anymore. And when you saw Tony La Russa's face in the dugout, the, you can't see from the dugout whether it hit the hit or not. You're going on the reaction of your pitcher or, or your players on the field. Brand Court taking ball one. But to add to what you say, I agree with you. It doesn't look like he's as sharp. He's not getting his curveball over as well as he can. Dave Duncan was saying one of the things he's really worked hard on him since he's had him with the Cardinals is to pitch down in the strike zone. So when they got him from Toronto and he was rehabbing coming back, he pitched up in the strike zone a lot. Thought he was a high strike pitcher. Up the middle. X time. One. Two double play. Two away for LaRoche. And reminded to show support for your favorite team with officially licensed Major League Baseball merchandise. Log on to MLB.com to order. 
Adams single to left in the second. The one thing I think, Jeff, that scares you about Carpenter is the history of that bad shoulder. Cardinals had to put him back on the disabled list back in mid-May, the 18th of the exact. Right shoulder bursitis, then came back on June the 6th against Cincinnati. And his numbers are respectable since coming back from injury. 2-2 two two with a 3.27. He was 4-2 with a 2.6 prior to that time on the DL. But you look back at last start, good against Cleveland. Start before that in Detroit, he got knocked all over the ballpark. Seven runs and nine hits and seven eights, despite the fact he didn't walk anybody, he struck out nine. Very good against Colorado in his last win. So he's really had an up and down go of it since the injury. Yes. Put a lot of innings on that arm last year. He had 241 innings, and he was their horse. If you remember, at the end of the season last year, I think he experienced a little bit of a tired arm. They backed him off just a little bit. Remember, that's one of the reasons the Cardinals ended up with him because of an injury. Pujols backhands. And Carpenter covers. Down go the Braves in the fourth inning. Through four in Atlanta, 4th of July, 2006. 5-2 Cardinals. No attention to those dark gray clouds out in the distance. They tell the washing rain they hold. <laughs> not at the ballpark, please. Not on the 4th of July. Scott Rowland leads off the Cardinal fifth inning. Oh for 2 tonight. 0 for 6 in the series. Facing Atlanta reliever Tyler Yates. Tyler Yates is a guy that went to camp with Baltimore. Coming off a completely missed season in 2005 due to rotator cuff surgery. Braves let him go and Atlanta picked him up, signed him in early May for Richmond. Came to the big leagues on, uh, no, to uh, back to the big leagues I should say, with Atlanta on May the 30th after posting a 2.16 ERA. And a little over eight innings with the R Braves. And we've talked, Jeff, uh, earlier times when Yates is in there about his stuff. Right field and Fran Poor. And Yates doing a good job getting two holes and rolling on fly balls to start here. What a way. Well, you know, you're just talking about his stuff. That ball beat Scott Rowland there. That was a 95 mile an hour fastball that got on his hands. You're right. You know, when you talk about, you see a lot of elbow surgery called Tommy John surgery. Those guys come back if they rehab properly, thrown almost as hard and maybe harder than they did before. Not so much out of shoulder surgery, not the rotator cuff, but Tyler Yates is throwing the ball very well. Mid 90s consistently. And a cutter that usually hits around 88, 89. Location has been. Yes. The question mark. Yes. But you look back on Yates's year since coming up, and he he got off to a tough start. First appearance against the Dodgers, he gave up three runs in an inning and a third. Since then, he's been pretty good. You know, it, in mop-up duty from time to time, and some of those stats get blurred with, you know, a, a good performance in a in a situation where the Braves are out of the ball game. But I'm like you, Jeff. I take a look at that radar gun and I see that ball movement, and you say, boy, if he can harness this, coming back off of all those injury problems. I mean, he's had two major surgeries. Tyler Yates hasn't just been the shoulder. He was injured when he was in the. Uh, in the Oakland organization earlier. So he had Tommy John surgery first in 2002, then the rotator cuff in 2005, and he's still getting it up there at 95. You got to take a look at this guy. You're not kidding. But as you said, you know, guys can throw lights out, can throw it up to 100 miles an hour. You better be able to locate. Just off the plate, and ball four. 
You may already know that the Braves Clubhouse Collection is your number one source for Braves merchandise, but did you know that we are also the source for authentic game-used items? For more information or to place an order, call the Braves catalog at 1-800-433-BRAVES today. You can always visit the Braves Clubhouse store at CNN Center. Big 4th of July crowd to take it in. Fireworks, of course, after the game. And we've got a good seat for you right here on Turner South. We'll be along with post-game coverage tonight. Featuring the fireworks show here at Turner Field. Some have already gotten into the uh, holiday spirit. One out in Encarnacion. I mentioned the, when he was up and hit that home run in the third inning. You think back to last year when John Smoltz pitched opening day in Florida and John just got bombed right out of the gate. Encarnacion hit that grand slam home run off John on that opening day. And then, of course, Smoltz turned it around 180 and just had a fabulous season. Hit hard to third. Giles, double ball. Nicely turned around the horn by Atlanta. Middle of the fifth. The Cardinals with a 5-2 lead on Atlanta. Braves fans with the patriotic caps that were handed out tonight. Ryan Langerhans taking strike one from Chris Carpenter. Braves have two runs on four hits. And the Cardinals five runs on seven. A lot of scoring early in this game. Law and order has been restored here lately. Ryan following one that kicks off the tarp. Oh, nice catch. Good hands. All right there. Strike three call. Ryan Langer hands. A strikeout victim, and that is the second tonight for Chris Carpenter. A delay call, perhaps, by Jim Reynolds. It was, you know, this ball tailed back right at the end. It, it, I thought it was going to be inside. It was back over the plate. Scott Thorman to pinch it for Tyler Yates. You like what you see with this young man, Scott? Yes, I do. I like his whole game. Third baseman Roland takes care of it. Well, a very special day when you tie baseball with the holiday on the fourth, and special to John Spokes. You know, as a dad, uh, yeah, my kids just love to see fireworks. And one of the best times they've ever had was just on the porch of our house across the river. Orchestra was playing. The fireworks were going on. They thought that was the neatest thing in the world. Here's Marcus ripping one foul back into the seats. 0-1. Not many folks don't like fire. Big spectacular coming up tonight here at the ballpark. One of thousands around the country tonight. That's some unique experiences in all the years of baseball, doing a lot of traveling. On getaway day, having played on the 4th of July, and then going to plane, go to the next town, and you're watching the fireworks below you. Yeah. That's unique. In all the towns, you know, around across the country as you're going west, for an example. Some, some exciting times. I remember as a kid growing up in New Jersey and always double headers on the 4th of July as when I was a fan. And we'd be at a picnic and I'd sneak inside to listen to the game and come back out. But you know, like the Dodgers and the Giants and the Yankees were all playing double headers. Full count to Giles, three balls and two strikes. Edmonds has it tracked. On this 4th of July, we salute the military and hoping that your 4th of July has been fun and safe. Bob Rath and Jeff Torborg and our crew from Turner Field in Atlanta. Big house to watch the Cardinals and Braves. And 
watching two of the greatest managers as the rain begins. Two great managers matching wits in this one. Tony La Russa and Bobby Cox. You talk about the all-time win list. There's Tony at number three behind John McGraw and Connie Mack. And Bobby sneaking, sneaking up on Bucky Harris and Sparky Anderson. The grounds crew's getting ready. And I wonder how long they'll wait. First base umpire crew chief Tim Welke getting the word on the rain and how much of it and where it is. Fans heading for cover as the leadoff man Molina sends one deep to left center field. And Langer hands it just went off his glove on the track. Molina into second base. Tough break for Ryan Langerhands. He had to run a long way to get that ball, stuck the glove up, and the ball wasn't there. Remember when you're running this hard and this long, your head's jiggling, and he looked like he reached for the ball, and, and as you say, it wasn't there. It just, where he reached for it, it wasn't. Part of that is running hard, and your head jiggles. Plus, you never know this bank of lights over here behind first base that might have gotten into those. Leadoff double for Molina, his second two base hit of the game. That's the fifth Cardinal double of the game. Of their eight hits, they have five doubles and a home run. Miles has been on base twice, RBI single, and a double to left center. Oscar Villarreal is in the ball game to pitch for Atlanta. Tyler Yates, an inning and a third of relief. Villarreal, the third Atlanta pitcher of the night. Good job by Tyler Yates. Yes, very good job. Swing and a foul back. They just saw that last pitch was down, fouled off, but here's what happened last night. John Smoltz on the left. Delivers the ball up out over the plate. And Aaron Miles doubles the left field for two RBIs. And tonight he does the same thing off of John Thompson in the left center field alley. Right side bouncer will get the runner to third. A 3 1 put out. Molina taking third base. One away. Now Chris Carpenter comes up to the plate. Bill Real making his 36th appearance. And over his last three, he has pitched seven and a third of shutout baseball to knock a point off his ERA. He was at 499 coming out of Houston. Then pitched superbly in relief of the injured John Smoltz at Tampa Bay back on the 23rd of June. Inside, boy, it's really raining now. And Tim Welke says that's it. Hold everything. And a one ball, no strike count to Chris Carpenter. Here comes the grounds crew. And for the second straight night, we've got a rain delay at Turner Field. This one comes in the sixth inning. With Molina at third, one out, and a one ball, no strike count on Chris Carpenter. Well, if this doesn't, if this doesn't bring back memories, <laughs> Fourth of July and raining in Atlanta. If you were with us on the pregame show, you saw this. But if you weren't, we want to re-rack it for you and, and share it with you again. If you're a Braves fan, just a baseball fan, you have got to love what happened here back on the Fourth of July of 1985. The New York Mets were in town, and we had a big rainstorm that delayed the start. And then the New York Mets and Atlanta Braves played one of the wildest extra inning games in baseball history. A contest that lasted through a second rain delay and they played 19 innings before the ball game ended close to 4 a.m. on the 5th of July. We went back and put together the highlights of that game and uh, just to see the old players and the faces and relive what was one of the most incredible games in Braves history. Let's go back and listen to Skip, Ernie, and John Sterling.
the middle. Another base hit. Another run is in. It's 5 3. There's a base hit to right field at 6 4 Mets. Carter goes to second, heading for third. And the throw comes in at second base, so the Mets again have runners on the corners. Two outs. And a one off. center fail. Harper back. Will a ballpark hold it? It won't. It's a home run. It's a home run for Howard Johnson. Here in the 13th inning. Johnson has homered off Forster to make it 10-8. Can anybody catch up? Claudel can't make it. This is going to score a run. Carter's in. Stop to third. And that's going to make it 12-11. And the 2-2 on the way. Takes it right field. That'll score one. Throw toward the plate. Going to be not in time. Bounced off the runner. Another runner coming to the plate. And three are going to score. And it's over as camp goes down on strikes. And listen to the hand from these fans here for both sides, really. We talked about this. Well, what an effort. I rode home with Bobby Wine. He was a third base coach. And we come rolling into our apartments out of Stone Mountain. And I look up and I see this light on in my apartment, which my wife is waiting there with her little daughter, two-year-old daughter, 5.30 in the morning. She was like maybe six, you know. So uh, she came walking in. She said, where have you been? And I said, you won't believe this, but the game just got over. And she says, you're right, I don't believe it. You slept in the car. So I had to sleep in the car for 
few hours and then get up and go back to the ballpark. Well, the, the thing I remember the best was I went home, and by the time I got home, the morning paper was there. And I picked it up, and I was driving down the, down the driveway, and I started laughing because as I told my wife when I got home, I said, honey, I've gotten home this late a lot of times. This is the only time I've ever done it with a clear conscience. <laughs> After a nearly three-hour rain delay, back to baseball in Atlanta. Bob Rathman, Jeff Torborg, and our crew. Cardinals lead it 5-2. to two. We'll pick up the game at the top of the sixth inning with one out. We have all been around some wacky nights in this game, but this has to rank right up there. How about the players? What do they do during three hours in the clubhouse? Well, Katie Temple caught up with Marcus Giles just a moment ago. All right, so um, what the heck were you guys doing in there for almost three hours? Well, I tell you what, I can't even walk right now because I've ate so many barbecue chips and cookies and soda pop. You just sit in there and play cards and try not to eat as much because you get so bored you just want to eat. But uh, we're OK. I was going to say, I don't think it was, it, Bobby doesn't want to know that you were eating all that stuff. No, just don't tell him he's standing over there. So we can't say that too loud. But uh, we'll be right. I'll go run a couple sprints and we'll be right back in and try to win the game. Is it hard not to get frustrated? Uh, it does get a little frustrating up there, but you know, knowing that you're down, you know, you're not winning this game, it's uh, a little easier to stay around and try to get the win. But if we're up 5 2 right now, we'd want to have been home an hour ago. Well, you probably want to get back on the field and see if you can get your third home run in two days, huh? Well, yeah, or just uh, let's get another win. We're on a little bit of a roll right here. It's kind of nice. Thanks, Marcus. All right, you got it. Thank you, Katie. That was some funny stuff from Marcus. And now you've got to lock that concentration back in. Fun and games are over, and it's back to the business of trying to pull this one out of the fire. Now, as we pick it up, the Cardinals have a runner at third. This is Yadier Molina, their catcher, who doubled before the rain and moved to third in an infield out. The pitcher, Chris Carpenter, was up, but they're going to lift him, and John Rodriguez will pinch hit and assume a one-ball, no-strike count. Oscar Villarreal was out there when the rain began. He comes back three hours later. And ladies and gentlemen, it is back to baseball in Atlanta. And they have just made the announcement in the press box that the fireworks for tonight have been canceled. And they will have them tomorrow night after the game. The rains came at 841. <laughs> Two hours and 51 minutes later, we are back to baseball. One ball and one strike. Infield is in for Atlanta. Braves down by three and a pitch out, thinking that, hey, maybe LaRusso might go to that squeeze again. That's very interesting because a lot of times managers will stay away from the squeeze with a left handed hitter because the pitcher and the catcher can just. Make sure the throw is toward third base and they would be almost impossible to bunt the thing. But if you time it right, sometimes you can't do anything about it. It's too late. Three balls and one strike. You know, it's strange here. You come back after almost a three hour delay and the game could be riding on this at bat right here because another run could make it four on the board as far as the lead is concerned. This one fouled into the seats and I have to think Jeff that's one of the toughest things about a restart like this sit 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 hour after hour after hour and then they tell you OK it's go time. Yes. To, to get that concentration and focus back. Well it's for both teams. Yeah obviously it's a difficult situation but especially for a pitcher who is he was out there Villarreal was out there three hours ago. Back in here trying to keep this runner at third base. Payoff pitch. Hit in the air to deep center field. Andrew going back. Andrew at the wall. He'll make the catch. Tagging at third is Molina. And he scores. Boy, Andrew hit that wall hard. And he's hurting a bit. And the Cardinals now lead it 6-2. to two. Take another look at this catch. He really slammed into that wall. Yeah, this was his right arm. He's feeling for the wall, and he got there so fast it got pinned under him, I think. Was it the elbow, perhaps? It could have been. Yeah, it looked like, you know, sometimes it, instead of hyperextending it, it just pushes it back even farther. 
Now the batter is Eckstein. Cardinals scored five runs in the first three innings. Chasing John Thompson finally in the fourth. Here's their in-game box score. Getting a lot of doubles tonight. Five so far. Two by Evans, two by Molina. And the Encarnacion two-run home run. Now a run here in the sixth. The next time hits a ground ball to short at Renteria. He throws on, and that's it for St. Louis in the sixth inning. And the Cardinals add a run on the sacrifice fly. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, Cardinals up four. Andrew Jones may have jammed his shoulder on that catch of the sacrifice fly. Another look, you'll see that right arm as he goes to brace himself, makes the catch, then slams in. Hand and elbow and jamming that right shoulder. And as he came off, head trainer Jeff Porter working on that shoulder. And Andrew is due to bat third here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Maybe a little stinger, perhaps? Yeah, that shoulder's been bothering him off and on for a while. You know, he makes so many diving catches and so many throws off balance from all angles. He gets the balls that other people don't even come close to. And that thing can be tender, especially remember he's just sat for three hours. New pitcher for the Cardinals is Adam Wainwright, the former Brave Farm hand, the youngster out of Brunswick, Georgia, St. Simons, making his 31st appearance. And Edgar Renteria leading off the Atlanta sixth inning. One ball and one strike. Adam Wainwright drafted by the Braves in 2000, former number one pick of this organization out of Glen Academy. Slow, tantalizing off speed pitch that rode in on Renteria. Two balls and a strike. Adam Wainwright grew up, of course, a huge Braves fan. And what a thrill it was for him to be drafted. And then what a shock it was to be traded out of the system to St. Louis. That happened after the 2003 season. And as Adam said, you know, once I listened to Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa, they were so thrilled to have me. The disappointment of leaving my favorite team went away rather quickly. Renteria gets a leadoff walk. Well, that's an, that's an interesting comment you just made, Bob, because the first time you're traded, after you leave an organization you were nurtured in, that's the toughest one anyway. But the fact of the matter was he was a fan here before, a great high school athlete, six foot seven. What a big kid. He was a wide receiver in football. Wow. Wilson Benavent. Braves down four. And Molina is going to go out to talk to Wainwright. Adam has been outstanding this season. You look at that stat line, Jeff, and it shows that the opposition is hitting just over 200 against him. That's one of the lowest marks in the National League. I was noticing that with the, this is his 31st appearance, but in 40, just a little over 40 innings pitch, he's only got up 30 hits. Very effective. Only eight walks. That makes nine. Foul back, one ball, one strike. Andrew coming out on deck. Benamit filling in for Chipper Jones. Chipper is in uniform and available to pinch hit, but the Braves want to keep him off that sore foot for nine innings. Chipper will be checked again tomorrow. A wave and a miss, one and two. Now those pitches away from Wilson Bediman look so good to him because for two nights the Cardinals been burying the ball underneath his hands as he's hitting left handed and he sees a couple out there he says he wants to take a shot at him whether they're strikes or not. Two and two. There is Chipper. And we'll bring you up to date with what's happened in this game, not only in terms of scoring, but also our Braves in-game box score in a moment. Coming a 2-2 to Benjamin. Got it. 
One away, and the former Brave farmhand that Wainwright gets the strikeout. Here's our Braves in game box door. A solo for Marcus to lead off the Atlanta first inning tonight. And then the Braves got a run home in the second. Andrew coming up next. He is 0 for 2 this evening and 0 for 4 in the series. Braves have four hits in the first five innings against departed starter Chris Carpenter. Andrews hit two ground balls in the game. One to short, one to second. And takes this one low. We talked about Wainwright getting traded away. And that came in December of 2003 when the Braves sent he and Ray King and Jason Marquis over to the Cardinals with J.D. Drew and Eli Marrero. You know, I was just thinking, too, that tonight we have Wainwright, who's 6'7", replacing Carpenter, who's 6'6", and they both have straight down or curve balls. I wonder if the hitters go up there and say, hey, that looks the same. Two and one. How about that play? Did you see Molina stop that yeah. ball? He didn't lay a glove on that thing. He just caught it in the bottom of his chest protector. In his <laughs> left forearm. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's got those sweatbands on. He used those in there as protection. Breaking ball strike, two and two. Renteria led off the sixth inning with a walk. Benefit struck out a moment ago. Now Andrew, even on the count, he's just one for 15 on the homestand. Two and two. So that's what you call a jam shot. The ball players would kid you. They say, well, they got way into his kitchen. He had just backed away and taken a big roundhouse curveball. And this was a fastball running right in on his hands. I don't even know how he got the bat on this one. Three balls, two strikes. But he's got that big hook. It's a big one. Big breaker. And every time he's thrown it to Andrew, Andrew's backside is given a little bit. He's fooled him. It, it looks like it starts so high, like maybe it's going to be at him. And he kind of gives a little bit. Back to back strikeouts for Adam Wainwright. <laughs> After he saw those breaking balls, breaking balls on the ball inside, this was on the outer part of the plate. That looked like a little cutter. That's a cut fastball. It's not a slider. It's not, you don't turn the ball at all. It's just a little off center when you hold it, and it just runs. It's, it's a, actually what it is, is a true slider. Sliding fastball. One and nothing out in the king. Good block. a third. Rolla will squeeze out number three. That's it for Atlanta in the sixth inning. 6-2 Six Cardinals and more greetings from overseas. Fourth of July for me right now. It's my daughter's birthday. So it's it's great because it's fourth of July and then my, my daughter on top of that celebrating her birthday. It's, it's pretty special. 
and they won't forget this 4th of July. A three-hour rain delay. Montana, I'm sure, is fast asleep by now. <laughs> 0 and one on Chris Duncan. As he bats here in the Cardinals' seventh inning, 6-2 St. Louis. Oscar Villarreal came on in the sixth and has pitched around that three-hour rain delay. The big bats of Pujols and Roland. Following Chris Duncan. Cardinals trying to get back on the winning track tonight after losing the series opener here last night. Redbirds have lost 11 of 13. They're leading the Central down to a game coming into this holiday. Cincinnati lost what seems like about a week ago <laughs> in Milwaukee this afternoon. Here's a swing and a high pop. Will it stay in for Benamit? <laughs> Foul strike. Duncan at two and two. Every Braves run scored in tonight's game. Safe Auto Insurance donates $50 to the Braves Foundation. Safe Auto Insurance 1 800 Safe Auto encourages you to get home safe. <laughs> On the nose to short and Renteria. One up, one down in the St. Louis seventh. And here comes Albert Pujols. Last night hit his 28th home run. He's hit homers Sunday and Monday and came to the park nine for his last 15. Cardinal fans getting another photo off as Pujols steps in. He's walked, hit one to the warning track, and a fly ball to right. One and oh. The home run last night off John Smoltz. No doubt about it. Amazing hitter. His seventh Turner Field home run in 16 games here. Some you don't see very often. You'll see Brian McCann drop a strike. Used to be a little game I played with myself at behind the plate to make sure I didn't drop any pitches in the entire game. Now Brian McCann has such good hands, he doesn't drop pitches very often, especially not strikes. One and two. I'm going to ask you something. Was I seeing something before on that, seeing things, I should say, when Chris Duncan popped that ball up by the visiting dugout did that ball look catchable well it did to me I thought it hit on the uh, dugout side yeah but just inside the but the yeah a, a catchable ball mm -hmm. go back and take another look at that fellas if we can one two pitch and Oscar just missed inside yeah, I find myself two, two. looking at this uh, guy wire here for the backstop thinking did it hit something because that ball looked like it was just you know, it was if you stood there on the edge by the railing, you could catch it. Two two. Got him. Four holes with a swing and a miss. All right, we have found it. Our guys at tape are outstanding. They don't miss a trick. Now Benamit comes over. And let's see where this one hits. They're saying that there's a a guy wire that connects the screen with the upper deck. And we're hearing that the ball hit that and then ricocheted inside the car to dugout. I wondered because it was one of those strange looking plays. It almost hit one of the Cardinal players standing there. It's like he wasn't looking up. But obviously. The way Benamit played yes. it, he felt like it was way back in the seats. Yeah. Just looks strange. That is a bad feeling, though. You're sitting there saying, Did I see that? <laughs> no, what really happened? 
You expect Rod Serling to pop out of the dugout yes. at any time. <laughs> Pass the mound. Renteria behind the bag. Oh, and drops it. Had a play. And it will go as a base hit for Scott Rowland. Boy, it would have been a difficult play, but boy, Renteria covered a lot of ground to get to that ground ball. Boy, he is able to cover a lot of ground. That ball's almost right back through the middle. Look how smooth he is. He has those long strides. And on the run trying to pick that ball up he didn't quite grab hold of it it was oh he tried almost flipped it up to his bare hand he knew that uh, Roland could run obviously a former teammate Jim Edmonds a good night clicking he's two for two with a walk and a run scored knocked in a run back in the first you know without belaboring the point on that pop up hit the guy wire you know in the old ballparks the real old ballparks where the roof used to almost overhang the field you could go over for a pop-up like that and think it was out of the ballpark and it would just miss the roof and come back on the playing field center field no guy wires out there to worry about Andrew makes the catch and that's it for St. Louis on this 4th of July, and there's a few minutes left before midnight, the fans enjoy the seventh inning stretch. By four, and they've got three innings to work with. Held to four hits tonight. After knocking four home runs out of the ballpark and roaring back to beat St. Louis last night, facing a guy that many of them developed friendships with in the minor leagues, although Wainwright was a little bit ahead of these baby braves. Frank Gore lifting one to right center, and Jim Edmonds back to get it. One up and one down in the Atlanta seventh inning. You really have to wonder, Jeff, what's going through the mind of Adam Wainwright. Here's a kid who, as we talked about earlier, grew up a big Braves fan here in Georgia. Never had the chance to pitch for the Braves at the major league level, but his first appearance in Turner Field, and here he is with a chance to help his team to victory tonight. I guarantee there's a lot of feeling going on. You know, the heart's pounding a little bit. You hear it a little bit in your ear. Of course, you need that pride factor whenever you play the game. You hear so many players say, when I stop being a little worried about the beginning of a game, that's when I should get out. You've got that little feeling in your stomach because it means something, but especially a kid like this. Brave fan organization, as you mentioned, now pitching here. Hmm. Pretty good chance there's a lot of family here, too. LaRoche at one ball and one strike. He talked about his football exploits, a kicker and a wide receiver. He's played basketball down at Glen Academy with a guy who went on to be the number one pick in the NBA a few years back, Kwame Brown. Mm. And then he gave up hoops to concentrate on baseball and football full time. Soccer player. And he was quite the athlete. One and two on LaRoche. You know, I was also thinking, we had been talking during this series about the two outstanding center fielders. When you sit in this booth and watch out at this game, and there's a ball hit to center field, both center fielders are on the move before the ball is barely off the bat. That's what makes them so good. That first step quickness, they're already on the go. Inside, three and two. And we welcome you to our coverage of the 5th of July. <laughs> Swing and a foul back. Adam hangs in there. Full count, three and two. How about these fans hanging in there? And you at home. Three hour rain delay. Seeing if the Braves can. Come from behind for a second straight night. Up and in, ball four. Second walk for Adam Wainwright. Marcus Giles homered for Atlanta. Braves have not had a hit since the third inning. Encarnacion, a two-run home run, monster to center field off John Thompson. And a two-hour, 50-minute rain delay in the top of the sixth inning.
Here's a swing and a foul as Ryan Langerhans comes up. Well, we talked about it earlier, Jeff. You got an Atlanta ball club here. You're trying to figure out a way to get back in this ball game. They have been stymied here by Wainwright. As we showed you, just four hits tonight and none since the third inning, and that was the double by Renteria. If you remember that far back. <laughs> I often said I don't remember what happened yesterday, but remember 30 years ago. Well, yesterday was the 4th of July. <laughs> I think I remember that. 0 oh, 2 to Langerhands. Bob, I can see why his numbers, and we're talking about Adam Wainwright, why his numbers have been so good this year. I, looking at his stuff, he's got that good curveball, and at six foot seven, he's got that loose arm when the ball seems to, it's kind of tough to pick up. That's what happens with real big pitchers. There's so many arms and legs flying at you, you don't see the ball readily. Two and two. Pete Orr has come out on deck. To pinch it for Villarreal. Full count. Good eye, Ryan Langerhand. Rolling on the three St. Louis All Stars headed to Pittsburgh next week. All the coverage on Fox. The payoff. And we'll crank him again. LaRoche at first and one away. Hey, the Braves can string something together. He'll get this crowd, what's left of it, back into this game. Yeah, you're right. And what it takes is base runners. And with this walk with Adam on at first base, base hit here would get things rolling. <laughs> And a swing and a miss for strike three. Third strikeout for Wainwright. Boy, oh, he's impressive. Up and away. Well, you can see there was a tail on that ball. That ball kind of tailed away from it. It wasn't a, a rocket. I mean, 91 miles an hour is pretty pert. There are guys throwing a lot harder than that, but that had action. Pete Orr pinch hitting for Villarreal. The attendance tonight was announced at 47,514. <laughs> Pete finds himself down two strikes. Pior and the Braves. And such a great job pinch hitting this season. Or tied with Benamit for the team lead with 10 pinch hits. 10 for 30 is over off the bench. The 0-2. Braves lead the majors with 37 pinch hits this season. Getting 282 in pinch hitting. And second among teams with 50 or more pinch hit at bats. Just a number. And Orr will get another chance. One and two. He hit the ball right off the end of the bat. Some of these bats are cupped in the end, and that so is his. And it hits off the end of that, and you're never sure what kind of spin you're going to get after you hit off the end of the bat. And Pete decided, I better get going, even though it started pretty foul, pretty much foul. If that hits that lip of that grass, that's liable to come back on, and that would be embarrassing if you're still standing in the batter's box. First, and the Braves were out in the seventh inning. Two innings left to Turner Field. Wainwright and the Cardinals up 6 2. Top half of inning eight. New pitcher for Atlanta. 
Mets is the rookie Kevin Barry, the right-hander, 27 years old, who made his Major League debut last week in Yankee Stadium. And had three scoreless innings. Gave up two hits, one walk, and one strikeout. And that strikeout was right there, Jason Giambi. Oh, what a thrill for Kevin Barry to make that big league debut. And uh, really pitched rather well once he settled down and uh, pitched that game. And then when Reedsboe was activated Friday, Kevin went back to the big leagues. Chris gets hurt again with the elbow, and it looks like he may be done for quite some time. Surgery certainly for Reedsboe a possibility. And then Barry was brought back to the big leagues and now makes his second major league appearance in his first here at home facing Juan Encarnacion. Pitch outside. I was talking with Kevin the next day after that Yankee Stadium appearance, and I said, wow, how many guys make their Major League debut as a visitor in Yankee Stadium? I mean, that's really pretty cool. Frank Court coming on to take care of Encarnacion, and there's one gone. And he said something to me, Jeff, that I found very interesting, and he said, you know, I, I was nervous and excited, and the first couple of pitches weren't very good. He said, but I settled down, and he said, my winter ball experience of pitching in Venezuela really helped me out. And I found that to be very interesting. I guess you can get it done in winter ball with all the extracurricular activities sometimes in those stadiums. You can get it done in Yankee Stadium. Well, remember, that was at home, too. He's a Ryder College product from New Jersey, not far from Yankee Stadium. How big was that? Added to it. Molina out on the 1-3 put out. Jabari continues to get it done. You know, it was interesting. Just as he came in the game at Yankee Stadium, there's a little smile on his face. And it's almost like somebody said something to him, and it was Yankee Stadium about, what, 45 minutes from home. Here I am, folks. Two up and two down for Aaron Miles. Bud is popped to the screen. You know, that's something I always tried to do as a manager knowing where the guys were from, knowing where their families were. If you got a chance, you try to get them in at home as much as you could. I learned that from Walter Alston, the Dodger manager. He did that for me. I was able to get my first base hit on our first anniversary. Bouncer to second. Giles the flip. And down go the Cardinals in the eighth. Kevin Barry gets on the 4th of July that has seen this uh, ball game. Suffered through a three-hour rain delay. These fans hanging in there right to the end and see if the Braves can pull one out for them. Six to two. They'll face a new pitcher in the top of the order to face him. Brayden Looper, the former Met Dad Marlin, coming on to work out of the Cardinal pen. And Marcus Giles, the leadoff hitter. This is a pitcher that you are intimately familiar with. So Taguchi has come on to play left. We'll verify the batting order as soon as we get it. A little bit low, one ball, no strikes. A two and a run. Numbers on Looper. 36th appearance with a 4-0-8 ERA. Taguchi will bat ninth, and Looper second on the double switch. You know, I was anxious to see how Looper threw this year. He had surgery last year at the end of the year with the Mets. And he was really a guy who was trying to become the closer with the Marlins in 2002 after the closer Alfonseca was traded over the Cubs. We tried to rebuild the bullpen. And Loop really struggled the first half of the season. But the second half of the season he said to me about the All-Star break he said you still keep me in mind in case we have a need I said yeah because our other closer Nunez had saved 20 games by the end of the season he was the closer and I wanted to see how he threw and he just popped one at 93 there's always a guy really looking for a, an out type of breaking ball he didn't have a real good breaking ball 2-2 two -two is it foul ironically a guy that came up in the Cardinals organization before he went to the Marlins in 1999, then to the Mets two years ago. 
And after last season had arthroscopic surgery on his right shoulder. Swing and a miss. And Marcus Giles goes down. Well, the Braves are having a hard time making contact. Let's take a look at our Delta scoreboard. Only one other game in going in the big leagues. Everything else in final. That one game that's going on is at Colorado, and they had a rain delay there tonight in Denver. 5 0 Rockies over San Francisco at the end of seven. Renteria is upstairs, taking one ball and no strikes. Hoping. I've been here all night. Can I get <laughs> one ball? Uh, boy, would his night be made if he got one? Oh, boy. Counts even to Renteria. Just one. Yes. You know, I always told our players, boy, when you're thinking about giving a ball away, of course, Major League Baseball suggests don't throw any in the stands. If you want to give a child a ball, hand it to him so he doesn't get hit in the snoot. But also used to talk to our players, you know how somebody will remember if you are kind enough to sign an autograph? They'll remember that forever. And they'll also remember if you don't. Because I still remember. I was a little nervous kid yeah. didn't in polo grounds, didn't want to ask for one. Two and two. Speaking of signing autographs, this is when the Braves came out to take the field. Frank Corb just writing as quickly as he can, trying to sign everybody's autograph. Little parachute into right, a base knock for Renteria. Here's a little bit more of that Frank Corb. This was right adjacent to the Braves' dugout, and Jeff just right as fast as he can because he's got to go warm up. He's got to get some running in, loosen up the legs after the rain delay. And all his faithful right there, and they're stretching those hats and balls and everything right in his face. And please sign. And Jeff tried to accommodate as many as he could. You know, it wasn't too many years ago he was one of those kids over there. That's right. That's exactly right. And here's a shot to the left, and that's going to drop in. Taguchi plays it on a bounce. First and second, and here comes Andrew. All right, now the Delta scoreboard. Nationals on a Zimmerman three-run home run, one at the ninth over the Marlins. Mets rallied late to beat Pittsburgh. Brewers over the Reds, 5-2. Astros, 7. Cubs, 2. Phillies went over the Padres, and there's that game at Denver in the top of the eighth, 6-0. And what do you know, the Dodger game is over before this one is over. 11-3, they pound Arizona tonight at Dodger Stadium. They played that one in about two hours. Here's Andrew, 0 for 3. And the Braves trying to make some noise. The fans trying to get behind them. Down four runs in the eighth. One ball, no strikes. McCann on deck. Ball, one strike. Those two fastballs right down the middle might mean that he's sitting on a breaking ball. Good backhand stop by Molina, two and two. Looper starting with a slider, and, and as I mentioned earlier, Braden Looper, recent years in his career, has he had a, a real small breaking ball that he couldn't con be consistent with. So he used two two fastballs and then tried a split finger. But he threw one to Andrew to start this at bat, and all of a sudden Andrew took two straight pitches right down the middle. I think he's looking for the breaking ball. Got it, and hits it up the middle. Base knock into center. Here comes Renteria. It's six to three. Well, he got it. He got the little hanger. He didn't try to do too much with it. He's trying to fight it to stay in and not bail out like he was bailing out on the big curveball from Wainwright. 
but he's looking for it and got it and hit it right back through the middle. Manager Tony LaRusso is headed to the mound. He's got a lefty Randy Flores in the bullpen. And the Braves have a lefty bat coming up next in McCann, and that will be it for Braden Luther. Six three now as the Braves do get the tying run to the plate here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. You know, I'm just wondering, Jeff, as we look at that at bat for Andrew Jones, and as the opposition, you see him take a couple of fastballs. As a catcher, would you have it in your mind, wait a minute, you think he's sitting on a curve and opt not to throw one there? Well, you hope he's not decoying you, you know, figuring he sees two and then he goes for the next one. It looked like Andrew, he had pulled out on the big breaking ball for Wainwright. And in fact, even before that from Carpenter, he was having a little trouble staying in. He was fighting to stay in, so he was taking the fastball and looking for something out over, and he got it. But yeah, you try to think along with the hitters, but then it comes down as a catcher. You say to yourself, I better go with my pitcher's best pitch. And that is not Looper's best pitch. If there's ever a doubt when I talk to young catchers or guys we were trying to talk to on our own ball club at the major league level, say if you get into a game and you're not sure what to call and the game is on the line, don't get beaten with your pitcher's second or third best pitch trying to fool somebody. Make sure you go with your pitcher's best pitch. And I think that percentage would be in your favor, but you can see how hitters make adjustments. And Andrew is really making an adjustment trying to stay in and not pull off the ball. So it's interesting to watch. That's why the game within the game is so much Pretty fun to watch. Yes, it really is. And how great is this for the Braves to get the tying run up to the plate here in this bottom half of the eighth inning. Earlier tonight, the Cardinals took the lead early, a double play ball off the bat of Roland, got the first run home, X died, and then Duncan scored on this Jim Edmonds double to right, and back a little after 7 o'clock Eastern time, the Cardinals had the lead. Marcus Giles cut that lead in half with a home run to left center field. Second inning, Cardinals get a run. This is Aaron Miles with a single up the middle. Molina scoring, 3-1. to one. Then Langerhans delivered for Atlanta this ground out on a strange play. Got Frank Coor home as LaRoche got in a rundown and Frank Coor darted for the plate and beat the tag. Encarnacion, two run home run in the third inning. Cardinals led five to two. Then the Reigns came in the sixth inning with a score of the same. And after he got back to playing, just a moment ago is Andrews single up the middle to make it a six to three ball game. One out, two on. And Brian McCann now to face the left-hander Randy Flores. Randy came on, pitched an inning in last night's game and picked up one strikeout. Now facing McCann, who is 0 for 2, hit with the pitch in the fourth inning. Numbers for Flores. Flores got McCann on a fly ball to left field last night. This one popped up. Two holes in foul ground. No infield fly. The ball was foul. McCann is out. And Frank Coor is coming up. Brian McCann is really furious with himself. He had set that count up. He got it into a hitter's count, taking those pitches, leading up to the two ball, no strike count. He looked for a fastball, but he got it. It was a little too far inside. And it jammed him. He is really furious. This kid has a great idea about hitting. So with that, Flores will come out. LaRusso wants a right-hander, and it will be a double switch to get the job done. So Flores exits, getting his job done, popping up the left-handed batting McCann. 
Frank Coor coming up when we come back. 6 3. Cardinals two out two on this is Jason Isringhausen the Cardinal closer leading save man in the National League with 24 as he comes on to make his 35th appearance it's a double switch for St. Louis Isringhausen will bat in the eighth spot and Hector Luna comes into play second base and he will bat second. So Luna's in. And yes, Isringhausen has 24 saves to lead the league. He also leads the league in blown saves with six. And here comes Jeff Francoeur. And maybe, just maybe, the spirit of Rick Camp will invade the body of Francoeur, and he'll hit one out of here to tie this game. This one ricochets off the mask, I believe, of Molina. And it's a strike on Francoeur. Well, he just missed the fastball he was looking for. Isringhausen has a great curveball. We've already seen two big pitchers with straight down a curveballs in Carpenter and Wainwright. But in this situation, Isringhausen has a real good downer curveball as well. On the fists and a roll of the pool holes. And that will be that for the Braves in the eighth. They do get a run, but leave a pair. And at the end of eight, 6 3 St. Louis. Cardinals six and the Braves three. Top half of the ninth inning here in Atlanta. Final game of this series comes up on Wednesday night, actually later today, technically. And that will come your way on FSN South. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. 7.35 first pitch. So Taguchi came on as a defensive replacement in that double switch. Taguchi up batting 296 with two home runs. Taguchi, Eckstein, and Luna, the Cardinal hitters here in the ninth inning. Kevin Berry's second inning of work for Atlanta. Got the Cardinals one, two, three in the eighth. Berry's job clear cut. Hold the Cardinals right where they are. Braves in the bottom of the ninth inning have LaRoche, Langer hands, and a pinch hitter for Barry scheduled to face Isringhausen. Taguchi sending one high in the air to left field. Langer hands getting underneath it. And that will bring up David Eckstein. Four in a row retired by Kevin. Third in the National League with hits. Eckstein at 103, but hitless tonight. And an opening strike. That's amazing. You said hitless tonight, and yet you feel that this guy contributed, not because he just is an excellent in the middle of the infield shortstop, but he walked his first time up and scored. Coming up to bat. Yeah. 
315 with three homers and 14 runs batted in. Barry dealing strike after strike. Talking about how long a day it can be with the rain delay like that, and you talk about the players. How about the umpires? You know, these guys are on their feet most of the time, then they have a three hour delay. This Jim Reynolds has done a terrific job tonight, very consistent. Blue Chief Tim Welke down at first base, swing and a miss. Barry strikes out Luna, and he retires all six Cardinals that he faces in the ninth. Braves need three to tie, four to win as we go to the bottom of the ninth become 4th of July tradition in Atlanta. Braves home game, big rain delay, and maybe some magic and extra innings as we play on practically 20 minutes to one here, Eastern time. Bottom of the ninth, Braves need three to tie. And Adam LaRoche to get it going against Jason Isringhausen. Left field and Taguchi. One going. Ryan lagged her hand. Hitless at three times with two strikeouts. We mentioned tomorrow night the coverage on FSN South. Left handed Chuck James, who has been so impressive. Since returning to the Braves as a starter, 2-0 with a 213 ERA. He'll go for Atlanta against Jeff Supon of the Cardinals. Quickly 0-2 on Langer hands. And a three-pitch strikeout. That's what you don't want to get into against Israel House. You don't want to get two strikes on here in a hurry because he'll come back with that big downer curveball. You know, that's the pitch, the curveball we've seen so much tonight of from the Cardinals. That's a pitch a couple years ago you and I were talking about, Bob, that the umpires, when the strike zone got smaller, they were not calling it for strikes. A lot of guys had to go away from it. Tonight, we've seen three of the biggest curveballs you want to see from pitchers all on the same Cardinal staff. Matt Diaz to pinch it. Terrific pinch hitter in his own right. 333 overall and 7 for 22 as a pinch hitter. Trying to keep hope alive in the ninth. And the Braves are down to their last strike. Cardinal fans and one from the University of Dayton. Watching here as Diaz gets back into the box. Breaking ball missing. Top of the order in Giles. Braves need base runners. Busted bat pop. Right field line. This is Pujols to squeeze the out. And with it, the victory for St. Louis. Jason Isringhausen, his 25th save, 
And the Cardinals have even this series at a game apiece. The Cardinals won it by a 6-3 final score out hitting Atlanta tonight 9-7. Chris Carpenter gets the win. Jason Isringhausen gets the same. And Chris Carpenter is our Home Depot player of the game. And not vintage Chris Carpenter by any means, Jeff. But you look at that final pitching line through all the difficulty, four hits allowed, two runs, only one walk. Yeah, really did a nice job. The problem with the Braves have had against the Cardinals the last two nights, Cardinals jumped out right away with two runs in the first inning, added on in the second with another one in the third with two more. That hurts. That, that really hurts, and that helps the pitching staff. So, in other words, Carpenter has done a nice, did a nice job with that lead. So the series is all even. And now you play for the rubber match tomorrow night with the left-hander going for Atlanta in Chuck James. And this is a Cardinal team that you can tell with all their right-handed punch with poo holes and rolling, et cetera, they can be a very formidable foe for a left-handed pitcher. Yeah, they can, but they also don't know him. That's the other thing. Chuck James is a sneaky fastball up in the zone. And he's got the good curve ball, and he's, he hides the ball a little bit. It'll be interesting to see. He's done an excellent job against two clubs that can swing the bat pretty well coming into this. So it'll be an interesting game, especially with, a, with the Braves going for a series win again. Yes, and trying to parlay that series victory against the Orioles and get some momentum that they can take into the All-Star break with Cincinnati looming on the horizon. A four-game series with the Reds begins here on Thursday night. Our final score this evening, the Cardinals 6 and the Braves 3. Action tomorrow night on FSN South. Braves and Cardinals here at Turner Field. Our coverage begins at 7 p.m., 7.30 game tomorrow night. We thank our crew for a long night. Great work, everybody. And we thank you for staying with us all night on Turner South to enjoy it. For Jeff Torborg, this is Bob Rathman saying so long from Turner Field in Atlanta. Cardinals win it.